What's up YouTube, Adam here, and in this video, I'm going to be bringing you open heart surgery with my new late 2013 Mac Pro. Now by open heart surgery, obviously I don't mean actual open heart surgery. What I mean is that we're changing the heart of the Mac Pro. I am upgrading the processor. Now, I am upgrading the processor from the original 6 core version to a brand new 10 core version, and this is model E5 2690V2. Now, obviously, these are both LGA 2011 socket processors, and the reason I have gone for the 10 core is because it works out to be the most economical. Now, this particular processor comes in at around £1,500 or $2,000 in the US, and the equivalent 12 core processor is significantly more expensive than that. And if you buy it from Apple themselves, it's even more expensive than that. So, this seemed to be the most efficient choice. Now, with this, you get the same clock speed as the 8 core, so you get a good 3 gigahertz clock speed. You also get the same amount of cache on the 8 core, which is 25 megabytes, slightly less than the 30 megabytes on the 12 core version. But in addition to the 8 core, you also get an extra 2 cores, obviously bringing it up to that 10 core total. Now, I've got to admit, this was a little bit scary taking the Mac Pro apart, and in order to do it, you did need to have some accessories. Now, I'll leave links to these down in the video description if you want to pick these up, but some very, very basic things needed in order to disassemble the Mac Pro, take out the old processor, and put in the new one. Now, I haven't made a video showing you every single step of this. If you want to see the fast-forwarded version of me taking apart the Mac Pro and putting it back together, then I will leave that right at the end of the video. But there is one already online, and I'll leave a link to that down in the video description detailing every single step needed to change the processor in the 2013 Mac Pro. Now, some of the actual accessories we needed were things like this, some thermal compound to put on the processor. We also need some Torx wrench little keys here as well, and we also need a cleaning cloth and some rubbing alcohol as well. Now, into the actual benchmarks themselves, and we'll start off with the original benchmark on my 6 core version. So I'm going to run Geekbench here. You can see the six cores with hyperthread in there in the graph. And we'll just let this run, fast forward it for just a second and take a look at the results. Now, obviously, I am running a ScreenFlow application here. So you can knock maybe five or 600 off of the score. Or sorry, add on five or 600 onto the score. So we can see there we had nearly 20,000 on the six core Mac Pro on the multi-core score. And if we go on to the new one on the 10 core Intel processor, we've got almost the same single core speed at 3,153, but almost 30,000 on the multi-core score, which is absolutely phenomenal. An increase of 50% over the six core version. Now, if we actually compare this to some of the other CPUs that we've got online in Geekbench's website, then you can get a really good feel for just how well this 10 core processor actually performs. So if we just click over onto the 64 bit multi-core scores and have a little zoom in there, you can see the 12 core one 32845. So only about 3000 ahead of the 10 core we beat both of the 2012 mac pros the old soul 12 core mac pros and the 8 core 2013 mac pro comes in at 25,621. so a 20 percent increase on that as well anyway guys thank you very much for watching this video please do hit that like button and i will see you all in the next one see ya